Wall Street's still trading. It's been a pretty weak trading session, and it comes after the US released some economic figures showing 273,000 jobs added to the economy. Why did that uh, spook the market slightly? Well, I think investors are toying with whether the Federal Reserve will indeed actually pivot and step down the size of their rate hikes next month. Now, we certainly expect they will, but I guess the job start has just thrown a bit of a cat among the pigeons because the employment data was stronger than what the market was looking for. And also, the unemployment rate has stayed steady at 3.7%, which is close to the 50-year low. So even though the Fed has aggressively raised rates and there's some signs of slowing in the US economy, there's still plenty of resilience in the jobs market. Yeah, and Bessa, as uh, we were discussing briefly before, the European Union has put a price cap on Russian oil, uh, yet China's economy is showing tentative signs of relaxing COVID restrictions, which should be good for oil demand. So uh, what do you think are the implications for global uh, inflation uh, and oil prices? Well, I guess the greatest risk around that decision with the cap is if Russia decides to retaliate and cut output. And of course, the organisation of petroleum exporting countries or OPEC, they're also mulling output uh, cuts. And so you could see uh, a situation where there might be upside risk to oil. Uh, the relaxation of COVID restrictions in China is welcome news. Uh, it is a very big economy in the world economy. It, you know, the COVID restrictions, the mobility restrictions in China had contributed to global supply chain disruptions and of course those disruptions have been improving in recent months and have helped uh, I guess uh, inflationary pressures and so further uh, res further relaxation of those restrictions I think means that uh, inflationary pressures could possibly roll off further uh, around the world as, as we'd want. And speaking of inflation pressures, let's look at Australia. A few days ago, the ABS released some uh, consumer price index figures. So it showed uh, the annual inflation rate dropped to 6.9%, which is lower than expected. So do you reckon cost of living pressures are beginning to ease and that's good news? I think uh, cost of living pressures are still very elevated, but the monthly indicator, as you said, uh, did step down from 7.3 per cent per annum to 6.9 per cent per annum. That's still a very high rate of inflation, but it's in the right direction. Now, it's the monthly series. The Reserve Bank focuses on the quarterly series, and the two aren't identical, although the monthly series has been providing a reliable indicator. So it's encouraging and possibly gives us some further evidence that inflation will indeed peak in this current quarter and start to gradually fall over next year, which is what we're anticipating at St George Bank. And Bessa, i got time for one last quick question. What do you think the Reserve Bank is going to do when it meets next Tuesday? We think they'll hike again by 25 basis points and take the cash rate to 3.1%. I can't put my hand on my heart and say they won't pause next week, but on balance, I think they should hike again, uh, given that you've still got a very tight labour market. Inflationary pressures are still elevated, even though we're starting to see some slowing in economic activity, particularly around retail spending starting to come through. Mesa Detta, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you.